Okay, everyone, time for a lesson in codominance. Hi! 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 Welcome to our channel. Hello. Hello. If you enjoy learning about reptiles and having a good laugh, what are you waiting for? Hit that subscribe button. Hit. Smash it. Smash. Smash it. Smash it right now. And don't forget to hit that notification bell. Smash it. Mass. Okay. Mass. The next snakes I'm going to be showing you are Codom. 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 Codominant. 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 I don't know. Okay. <laughs> They're codominant, and I, I can't spell it, so leave me alone. Examples, I-M-G, hypo, what else? Motley. So Motley does it. Motley. These are three great examples, and there's other ones out there. Uh, Raptor, other stuff. So let's get on with the lesson. So IMGs, hypos, and motleys are codominant, or any codominant snake is there is the snake that's carrying it. So let's say this is a snake carrying it. Woohoo, wonderful. This snake is carrying the gene, whatever it is. Now, when the snake breeds, so when it's carrying the gene and it's visually showing it, it is the homo Homo zy, homozygous form, because this, no, no it's not, I'm lying, it is the heterozygous form, it is the het z. so when this snake is carrying one copy of these genes, and we're going to cross out IMG too, because I don't think there is a homozygous form of the IMG, which is the super, which I'm going to explain, so now, this snake breeds, whether it's male or female, it is carrying the heterozygous form of hypo. That means it's just carrying it and it's visually expressing it. Because it does in the heterozygous form, even though albinos are not like this. But it's confusing, I understand. As you can see, even trying to teach you, I'm a little confused. I'm not, but like, trying to show you. Okay, so, this first snake is carrying the hypo gene. Okay, now it, it's, it's gonna breed and it's going to pass on a copy of that to about 50%. So let's say there's 10 babies, and they have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. And 5 are carrying, and these green ones, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So 10 babies, 5 are carrying, 5 are not. Now, because it is a visual gene, it's not recessive, it's not going to be hiding. You're going to see it either has it or it doesn't. So these five snakes will be looking hypo. They will, they'll show it, they'll express it, or they'll look motley, they'll show it, they'll express it. So this snake can be bred to anything. Uh, anything that is not carrying hypo, and this is what you're going to get. You're going to get about 50% visuals. And none of them, well, they're all het because they're visual. The non-visuals are not carrying the gene at all. They're not het for it. They're not showing it. They're just whatever genes they are minus hypo. There's no hypo in there. But these ones, they're all carrying hypo. So the five are carrying hypo. So now where it gets really interesting is when we breed a snake. Okay, so we bred a snake carrying it here to a snake that is not carrying it. But here, we're going to have a snake carrying hypo and another snake carrying hypo. And now, when these snakes breed together, we're going to have 50% hypo, 50% uh, chance of the babies getting hypo from this one, 50% of the chance of the babies having hypo from this one. So let's say half the babies are hypo. One, two, three, four, five, or a quarter. Yeah, one, two, three, four, five. So with the same thing, about 50% of these babies are going to be hypo, 
about 50% of these babies are going to be hypo. So about 50% of the whole litter has a good chance of being hypo. Now, about 25% of the babies, so let's say two and a half, so two from there and three from there, so this is from the whole litter, so one is a male, one is a female, but 50% of them are hypo. We have about 25% that will miss the gene completely, so nothing or whatever other genes they're carrying they might have, but then where it gets really cool is about 25%, so let's say these ones, one, two, three, and then one, two. So these 25%, and these are the chances, it doesn't mean it's guaranteed that 25% of them are going to be like this. They are super hypos. So these super hypos are actually the homozygous form of the hypos. So what is interesting about these 25% that are super is they'll look, lots of the time they'll look crazy patterns, crazy colors, like they'll be aberrant and different, they'll be brighter, they'll have twice as much orange or something, they will look cool. But we can't say that they are 100% super. Why? Because even though they look super and they're awesome, okay, let's, let's talk. Let's talk now, you get to see me. But you can, you can go back, you can pause that, you can look at it. Okay, I'm gonna switch. Okay, very nice, very nice. So the 25% that are supers, when they produce babies, every single baby that they have will be hypo. They won't produce any normals. So that's what's really cool about the codominant genes. They have a super form. When you breed them on their own to anything, they pass on the gene to about 50% and you see right away it has the gene or it doesn't. And then if you put two of them together, they have 50% that are hypos, 25% are nothing, and then they have 25% that are super hypos. The thing that you have to remember is just because it looks like it's a super hypo or you think it's a super hypo, we're not really supposed to sell them as supers because it's not proven until it gives birth. Because sometimes in those litters, there will be hypos that are super hypos and they just look like normal hypos. And then other times there'll be ones that you think for sure are super and they look like they're supers and then they produce normals. So I'm going to try and show you a nice example of that. So this here is Athena. And to me, I figure maybe she was like a jungle or a super hypo or something. She doesn't really look your typical pattern. She's pretty like crazy. She also just ate, so she's a little bit tense, but so to me, she doesn't really look like a normal hypo. She looks like she's a super hypo, but I've bred her and she's produced normals. So that means she's not a super. So let's say you had a hypo and it looked like this and you thought, wow, that's probably a super. It wouldn't really be fair to sell it as a super. You could say probable super. That would be the correct way to label it. But if you label it as a super and then it ends up being like this, and produces normals, then you lied to someone. <laughs> okay, so hopefully that helps explain codominant genes to you and how they work. Yeah. To watch more to watch more videos about boas, click on the first video. There's a whole playlist for you. You can learn all sorts of stuff. Otherwise, check out whatever the other video is. Stay safe, have a good one.